scorn, 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 scorn. Irish fans have basically spent the last few months living out James Joyce's career. Huge acclaim after that amazing run last year, before a little cloud appeared over the blue Irish sky, and the work became a celebration of misery. They were swatted aside by England twice, a painful case of complacency against Italy, and then they played in an encounter to forget with their Welsh counterparts, before being, last week, catapulted into a Finnegan's Wake tier lucid high by hitting the world number the one spot. It's been a weird run for the Emerald Isle, but the one consistent is their reliance on the two gallants at halfback, Connor Murray and, in particular, fly half Jumble Sale Sex Pog. With Joey Carberry crocked and Jack Carty still inexperienced, Ireland are even more reliant than ever on the one man they rely on more than anyone else. Because if they're going to have anything for their mothers to be proud of after the World Cup race, Ireland are going to need sex garage to be firing. Otherwise, they could end up the dead. Last week's video highlighted the importance of Japan's halfbacks in their fight for the first quarter final, but when Yutomura himself likely kicks things off on Friday, one man will be front and centre of everything. Whilst the likes of Kotaro Mashashima are bound to be amongst the tournament's most exciting men to watch, one man transcends this team. No single player in this year's competition towers over their squad as proudly or as grandly as Japan's captain and a face you will see everywhere in Tokyo if you're planning on coming, Michael Leach. Having previously moved to Japan as a teenager, Leach completely bought into Japanese values and simply exudes the spirit that characterised his nation last time out. Brave and unwilling to ever say die, Leach is seemingly omnipresent and still still manages to appear out of nowhere whenever and wherever a big player is needed, his tries against England and Russia last autumn being the best cases in point. The moment Japan needed something special, outstepped their captain. Simply put, Michael Leach is amongst the best players in the world, and will give every last drop of himself to get Japan into their first quarter final, here in their one shot at a home World Cup. Whilst his name looks a bit like someone just dropped a bag of Scrabble tiles, Gajev is not a man for silly word games. A phenomenally hard-working, hard-running, hard-hitting flanker, Gajev has the potential to be for Russia this World Cup what Mia Makave was for Romania in the last World Cup, or Mamuka Gugodze has been for Georgia for so many years. They may not be the flashiest player in the world, but in a game of pure graft like rugby, it's players with the sheer industry and impact of Gajev you need and want to be in your side. Russia have Vasily Artemi for fullback, who may catch more casual eyes, but if they can compete against the likes of Ireland and Scotland and put in a good fight on Friday against Japan, it'll likely be because of the work Gaja puts in. However, if we're going to use the word flashy, it doesn't get much better, much flashier than Samoa's golden fullback, Tim Nano Williams. He's just recovering from injury, so we don't know how much of him we'll see, but Nano Williams is quick, Nano Williams is balanced, and Nano Williams is talented beyond compare. In fact, he's so suitably good, Samoa even tried to play him at 10 a few years ago just because it get the ball into his hands more often, and that's something everyone outside this pool will be hoping happens a lot, because Nano Williams is sheer box office. I also want to throw in a bonus mention to the number eight Afromosa, who has the potential to be a real breakthrough player this World Cup. Not especially experienced, but he's a big ball carrier who more than runs his way in a way other teams will have to watch out for. I could gawk all day at the beautifully explosive feet of Stuart Hogg, and I sometimes feel like this channel is 40% gawking at Finn Russell's wrists, but at the end of the day, if you want a job doing, Call the Mish. Hamish Watson is the kind of bloke who wanders around a building site without a helmet, but it's not a case of building-based concussions making him stupid. Bricks break on contact with his cranium. Falling metal from any height bounces right off. Hamish Watson could probably walk through fire if he wanted to. The Mish beat more defenders in 15 minutes against Wales than any Scotland player has in any Six Nations game ever. And that's just him getting warmed up. For all the twinkle toes the Scotland backs have, it's the throw down fingers of the Mish we're all going to have no option but to watch whilst wondering whether we should all really put on a helmet, just in case that Samoan he's throwing comes right through the TV. Thank you, that was day one, that was pool A. There are of course three more, pool, three more pools in the Rugby World Cup, which means there will be three more days of things like this. Um, so that's coming over the next three days. I'll see you tomorrow for pool B. Uh, thank you additionally to Patreon, thank you to the Find a Player app. Um, if you do fancy wasting these last few days before uh, before the Rugby World Cup by doing some glorious, glorious fencing, they put the vertical fencing, they fencing, uh, then why not head there, download that, and you can play fencing, do fencing against other people who might like the channel. Thank you very much, see you tomorrow.